This morning I am going to be making some color samples. What's a color sample? Color sample is something like this. It's just a way to know what a color is. Enamel does not work like paint. Paint may dry a tiny bit lighter or a tiny bit darker than it looks when it's wet, but enamel is oh, often a completely different color before it's cooked to when it's after cooked. Or two enamels might look essentially the same, but they're not the same color at all. So for instance, if I'm looking at these jars, those two colors right there, look pretty much the same, but they're not. One is a medium pink and one is a dark pink. And I won't know exactly what those words mean because they're just words. And somebody in Japan made up those words or somebody in the United States who heard the original Japanese names made up those words. And what they mean by those things is totally different or could be totally different than what I think they mean. My goal long-term is to be able to know that when I want to make a design, I know exactly what those colors are going to look like, but I actually need to make samples first. So let me show you the process. First thing we need is actually what I'm doing is I'm doing some, some remedial work here this morning. I have a few samples that I don't like the way they came out. These were made probably a year ago, maybe even longer. And I didn't understand enamels as well at the time. And therefore, I just sort of made them. I thought I was doing it right. But you see how muddy those colors are? They're not nice and clean. It's not like this where you can really see how the color looks over different things. Now, what we do here is, this is a white background. It'll start out looking like that. It might be a smaller one, it might be a larger one, but essentially it's just a white background. And I have different shapes that I can use. I haven't decided. I kind of like squares, but I don't have a lot of squares, so I'll have to decide whether I'm going to use squares or I'm going to use circles. Circles are handy because they're super easy. They come pre-stamped that way, so I don't have to think about it, <laughs> which is kind of a lazy man's way of doing it. And you can see I did that one using a, a circle, probably because it's what I had at the time. Um, I don't know why I prefer squares. Maybe it's because there is more space on it. And obviously the size of your square determines how much space there's going to be. But I have some larger ones that I want, like these big rectangles, that I want to save. That's, that's the back side. Uh, that I want to save for doing some other tests where I'm using a bunch of colors on a piece. So I have I have a limited number of pre-made options here. I may go cut a few new ones, because I have a couple of these like that. But I usually use a slightly smaller thing, so it's uh, six and one half dozen of the other. These are about the same size. I could probably use a couple of those. I have a couple of those made up. That would probably work. I'll figure it out. The hard part is when you're a little tired, sometimes you can sit there and waste a lot of time thinking about things that don't really matter. <laughs> and I don't want to do that. I want to get some work done this morning. So my goal is to make something nice and clean like this that really shows the colors cleanly so that when I look at a tile, I know exactly what that color is going to look like when I go to use it. And I can see by looking at these old ones, first of all, I had it on, the enamel was on unevenly. I can feel that just by rubbing my finger over it. Uh, but I probably did some stuff wrong too, like on, let's see, this one. Um, this particular color, I believe, is actually supposed to be an orange. Let me see, I'll check the name of it. LT29, I have my, Cheat tacked up here on the on the board. LT29. 
is a yellow for copper. And that means it has to be undercoated. In other words, there has to be something between the copper and the um, enamel. And I think the color ideally will be this color here. But this was put over directly over silver, silver, silver foil, and this was put directly over gold foil. So I have to figure out exactly what's going on. I have my suspicions because, I, like I said, I did this a long time ago, and I probably wasn't as careful about washing the enamels, and that's a whole other story. So when you get enamels, it's not like a paint where you can just use it. If you're going for a transparent enamel, they have to be washed before they're used because there'll be a bunch of oxidized dust in there and that will make the enamels cloudy and your goal is to get really clear colors like this. And you can't get really clear colors if you've got oxidized dust in there. So let's get started. I'm going to choose a color and I'm going, to, well, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to show you how I set these up. Now, these, this is not my entire supply of L14. The rest of it's in a large Ziploc similar to this, except it says L14 on it instead of N26. And it's stashed away. Now, why would I put my stash of enamels in two different places? Well, these are limited availability. And if something were to happen to this, if I were to spill it, if I were to spill something into this and contaminate it, I don't want my entire stock of this color enamel to be ruined. So I keep a bunch of it put away. I will have this, and then I will also have another container, and I'll show you what I do there. Some of you will recognize these immediately as single serving containers like they use at fast food stores for condiments. So you might get pickle relish or mustard or mayonnaise or something smooshed into one of these and hand it to you with an order. Why would I use those? Well, I want to keep my enamel clean. You'll see them sitting around here sometimes. So for instance, I'll take an L14. I will mark the bottom and I will mark the top. Now, not everyone does this. It is my way of doing it. Now, why would I do that? Well, because I want to, to know that everything that's in there is going to be that color and only that color. And I will never mix another color in there. If I am mixing two colors together, I will mix them in a separate container that doesn't get labeled with a specific thing unless it's maybe labeled with both of the things at the same time. So what I will do is I will take the L14 I'll put some in here. This is a completely clean container. And you'll notice I only put a tiny bit in there. I will then put this container away. And now I'm gonna wash it. Now, how does one wash something like this? Well, this is clean distilled water. Uh, if you were to look at that closely, you might figure out that this used to be a Toronto chocolate dispenser. <laughs> Now see how cloudy that water is? And I'm going to pour off that cloudiness. Now, if this was an opaque enamel, I might not wash it any more than that because opaque is solid. The light doesn't come through it. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get remove any of the little bits here that's going to prevent the enamel from being as transparent as possible. I want the light to be able to go through this enamel and be clear like glass. So, okay, I'm going to decide arbitrarily that that's clean enough. Get the water out of the way. Clean up the grips that I made here. Now, now I'm going to keep this covered because I don't want anything to fall in it. 
how am I going to make my sample? I'm going to take a pre-enameled. Now I buy these plain. They are plain copper when I get them. They look, this is a 31 and this is not the same shape, but you'll get the idea. It's just a piece of copper. I was playing with this and I made a mess of it, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm going, I put white enamel on the front. I put white enamel on the back and it's ready to be used as like you would use a tile for trying some colors or a nice clean piece of paper. So it's ready to go. And now I am going to take some foil and I'm going to put it on here. I have gold foil and I have silver foil. And gold foil in particular is very fragile and blows away easily and all that other kind of stuff. So I'm going to just cut a piece of it. And I, since I'm planning to do a bunch of this work today, I'll cut more than one piece. And gold foil is ridiculously expensive right now because the price of gold is way up. So I'm probably going to be a little cheaper in terms of how much gold I'm going to use. Now, recognize if I do a good job on these samples, I will never have to make these samples again. So the whole point is to do a good job. Do the same thing with my silver foil. Let's see. I need a couple of pieces of that. What I'm doing is I'm getting the stuff ready before I go to make anything because you don't want to be stopping in the middle of making something to go get bits and pieces more than you have to. Oh, it happens, but it's nice if you don't have to fiddle around too much. It's nice if you can just zoom through. Now, I have those foils ready. I'm now going to get my little upside down cup. <laughs> Now, people do this all kinds of different ways. I know that this particular container contains a product called Clear Fire, and this is 50% Clear Fire and 50% distilled water. I use distilled water where I live because the water here has a very high mineral content and it can affect the way the enamels behave. And that's the last thing I want to do is create a situation where I'm adding extra variables into how my enamel is going to look. I'm going to rinse off my brush, make sure it's clean. It should be, but you know, always be sure. Then I'm going to take a little of the clear fire and I'm going to paint it on here. I am then going to take on the left hand side a uh, decent sized piece of silver foil and I can see I've got a little piece of silver foil stuck on there. Let's see, there we go. Boing. There we go. You'll notice the way it just laid down quickly. That is just what they call capillary action. Basically the it's not even though clear fire is an organic glue, all that's happening here is it's just like a piece of tissue paper will stick to something that's wet. And it's working the same way. It just literally sucks the foil to the surface and makes it stay. Because this does have a glue in it, which is the clear fire, when it dries, it will tend to stay anyway. Now, I'm going to put a little piece of gold foil up here. Boink. And I'm going to put another piece of silver foil down at the bottom. Now, why would I do it this way? Well, I'll tell you why. I'm going to use that foil to reflect the light through the enamel. So I want there to be a nice quantity of foil on the surface, and that's why I'm actually throwing a little extra on here. I do want to show it over white also, but in this case, I'm going to cook this so that it sticks to the 
cook this in my kiln so that the foil will actually bond to the surface of the enamel. And I am going to let it cool. Then I'm going to put flux, which is clear, think of window glass, over this section here. And what that means is I will have the light reflecting through the enamel, any color enamels I put on top. But I'm not going to put anything over the foils that are on this side. Now, why would I do that? Well, because I want to see if the enamel is going to have a chemical reaction with the foil. The chance that enamel will have a chemical reaction with gold is extremely small. Gold is a very non-reactive metal. It's why a lot of people like gold as jewelry. Uh, if you've ever had a sterling silver ring, most people will turn green from sterling silver. And it's not because you've done anything wrong or because somebody cheaped you out on the silver. It's because of the copper that's present in the metal. And making this spot of gold just a little bit larger. I'm not worried about it being smooth because the crinkly surface of the and a foil is actually going to reflect more light, sort of like a prism shoots light in all different directions rather than just a mirror being flat and shining through in one direction. So put those away. And why do we put them away? Because this stuff literally blows away. <laughs> it can also get dirty and we don't need that. I'm gonna rinse off my brush again, dry it. And then this is going to go into the kiln. So what I'm going to do is get set up to go to the kiln. Here is my enamel piece with the foil on it. It's cool, it's out of the oven. Obviously I can touch it, it's not cooking my fingers. And now what am I gonna do? I am going to take flux. Now flux is simply clear enamel. Think of it as putting a pane of glass. In this case, it's kind of like putting saran wrap <laughs> over this stuff because what it's going to do is it's going to keep this piece of silver from having any kind of a chemical reaction with the enamel. Now it may or may not have a chemical reaction with the enamel. It depends on the metal salts that are actually used in the enamel to color it. But we won't know for sure until we try it. Now after a while you can make a pretty educated guess. You know for instance that if it's a pink or a red or an orange color there's a pretty good chance that it's going to have a <laughs> a negative response to that silver. In other words, it's going to turn it some really funky color, usually sort of a brownish, yellowish, funky color. And that's not we're look, what we're looking for here. We want to know what this enamel is going to look like when it is properly cooked in a clean, situation. Now what I just did is I took the what I just did is I took the um, flux and I sort of dabbled it all over this side. You can see that you can't see the silver there. And I'm going to take a piece of paper towel. I'm just going to barely touch the edge of this and what it's going to do is it's going to suck off most of the water that's on there because I want the, the grains of enamel to stay where they are. When you deal with paint, paint grains are super, super fine. And anyone who's had a lot of experience with paint will know that there is a difference in the size of the grains in various types of paints. In this case, we're dealing with something that is like a fine, fine, fine sugar. So I can actually see the little grains on there if I look at it from the right angle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to scoop it up, and I'm going to put it on a little trivet. And this guy is going to go in my kiln. And this section of the enamel is going to cook and become clear. And when that's done, then I can actually start working with the colors that I have and start creating 
these samples so that I know what the color is actually going to be when I want to use that enamel. So, in the kiln. Hey.